Hello, this is Shesha Chalam from Astrograd, Mysore. Today, let us understand the results of uh, Jupiter being in the ninth house. And we all know this is a great position for Jupiter because ninth house means Dharmasthana, that is the house of uh, righteousness. Uh, that is the nearest, uh, you know, translation which uh, we can do in English, you know, righteousness for Dharma because Dharma, Shraddha, these are words in Sanskrit which cannot be fully translated in English. And I am getting comments in my <laughs> channel that, uh, you know, my English is uh, as good as a butler English and I am happy with all those comments. I don't have anything to do with it because I here I am trying to communicate in this language using English as a medium. But my main focus is to make you understand astrology. I am not teaching any, you know, Cambridge level English here. So anyway, uh, going ahead, let us understand that the ninth house is for father, Pitrusthana. Ninth house is for dharma, that is for righteousness or ethical behavior, ethical life, social ethics. All this comes under ninth house. The guru, that is the master who can give you uh, or put you into elevation, who can uh, give you a lot of uh, seeking, you know, the learning. So that is because a seeker is always known as a pupil, a sishya. And when he goes into the, uh, you know, level of uh, uh, the guru, he becomes the guru himself. So the link between the fifth house and the ninth house has to be seen to understand whether a seeker who actually seeks to learn something can actually master that particular skill that we have to see it in the ninth house where actually the gurus uh, you know diksha that is the blessing of the master is there for the uh, student so if there is a good blessing for the student uh, why not he will do wonderfully well uh, uh, in his uh, life so uh, Sorry for uh, me handling too many glasses. I had some problem with this. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> let us carry on. Ninth house also means those ritualistic practices what a person will uh, do in his life. Like uh, practicing uh, traditional rituals like the puja system, going to the church, going to the mosque, doing regular customary traditional rituals is also the ninth house. So, if we have got something from our forefathers uh, that this is what we should be like and this is what we should be doing and if a person has a Jupiter in the ninth house and it is well placed, you know, it is not a, a retro, then he will not question the basis of this particular practice. You know, he will not question as why, why these things, why not, why not doing something else. Why not do this? So he will not co cross question, but directly follow it, telling that this is what is our tradition. This is what is our value system. So the the uh, beautiful beauty of Jupiter in the ninth house is these people are very humble. They respect elders and they are very pious in their uh, you know behavior and attitude towards life. So they are very positive in life and they are also having luck. You know the luck of having a good, uh, you know, uh, father, knowledgeable father is to have a good Jupiter in the ninth house. So if you have a knowledgeable father or a knowledgeable guru in your life, you are the most blessed person. That's why we tell ninth house is blessing. Ninth house is blessing and fifth house is what you get, Puro Punyasthana, what you get into this world. And ninth house is what you get because of your forefathers or your guru. So the one five nine theory is a beautiful theory to understand how balanced we can live in this life. And here the materialistic concept of life, the money and all those things are immaterial actually. They are not to be considered at all. But still, uh, you know, going into uh, a better position in life, living comfortable is also... Some, some days nowadays regarded as materialistic, but I don't consider it as materialistic. See, if a person is searching for peacefulness, how is it considered for uh, as a materialistic thing? So, comfort, 
living in harmony and comfort is a different thing altogether uh, living in peacefulness and going to an elevated level of spirituality is a very different thing that happens in the ninth house where jupiter is placed so if if jupiter is a little weak and maleficially placed in the ninth house we can see that this person gets involved too much in materialistic uh, ritualistic processes so that means what is materialistic ritualistic process is it is not dhyana avahana uh, and uh, you know chanting mantra chanting no it's not that it is like idol worship you know going into the uh, deep into idol worship so it's it's like more practical involvement into rituals so if jupiter is very strong these people will uh, be more into tattva gnana that is knowledge based uh, uh, practices so where knowledge is there uh, the physical materialistic ritualistic practices will come down so that is how it is so usually these people are attracted to old school uh, kind of uh, you know knowledge scriptural knowledge you know going into the masters going for higher knowledge into scriptural uh, and uh, you know vedic scriptural mathematics into finance they are very they go deep into research so ninth house is a very good house for going into higher studies into higher uh, higher than higher studies that is into going into research and uh, becoming scholars so this is a very beautiful position as such so uh, jupiter if jupiter is a kendra adipati see the lordship is also counting here i usually don't take up these examples as of now because this is a little higher uh, uh, point to understand but still with regard to jupiter's ninth house i i would want to tell these things so i made some notes on this so if jupiter is a kendra adipati that is if it's a lord of a quadrant from the ascendant then sitting in the ninth house it will give materialistic luxury though you want it or you don't want it whether you are not having any intention for it you will have it you will have blessed you will be blessed with it so like being born in a rich uh, family being born in a royal family being born in a socially recognized and respectable family these things happen when jupiter falls in the ninth house for a native so it's a beautiful and and being a kendra sthana adipati if it is a upajaya sthana adipati that is the uh, lord of uh, houses of growth that is kendra sthana means 1 4 7 10 i am not talking about the lagna as of now but still lagna adipati going to the ninth house is obviously a fantastic position but still uh, the upajaya sthanas are the 3 6 10 11 once again 10th house is uh, double it is both the kendra and the upachaya so please try to understand it is growth and prosperity growth and occupation so occupational growth and growth of prosperity is both seen from the 10th house so do not make the mistake of taking 10th house only as a kendra no it is also a fantastic upachaya sthana that is the house of growth so if jupiter is the house of is lord of the house of growth and it is sitting in the 9th house it is one of the best positions for financial growth they will be rich very rich extraordinary rich and it is also you know it's like a parental lineage that this family is a very rich family from father to son to grandson the richness flows so that happens when you have a nice fifth ninth uh, combination and also a strong upachaya sthana adipati sitting in the ninth house jupiter so if it is the eighth lord you know in cases of taurus particularly uh, because uh, taurus the eighth house is sagittarius and jupiter becomes the eighth lord and if it is sitting in the ninth house being debilitated that is a tough position you know they'll face a lot of hurdles they'll feel they they are unlucky you know things are happening but not as per my liking now i am putting too much effort and i am not getting the right uh, results so that is how they think they feel so uh things will not happen as per their desire so that is what it is but if it is the uh, eighth lord you know for uh, the other lagna that is for uh, um, <clears throat> it is the eighth lord for leo so then sitting in the ninth house that is the eighth lord for leo sitting in aries they become extremely lucky because they get 
they we are blessed with parental property they are blessed with uh, very good uh, lineage and you know it's a nice thing to happen uh, but that's what you should go into the details to understand the lordship of jupiter and then the placement of jupiter and then correlated with regard to whether it is a malefic it's a natural malefic it's a uh, temporary friend or something like that then then go ahead so it is a little lengthy process it's a little complicated thing but let us not go into it now so if it is the 12th lord and it can be the 12th lord for capricorn and it can be the 12th lord for aries and if it is the 12th lord in case of aries and sitting in the 9th house beautiful position for going abroad traveling places around the world exchanging great knowledge between you know institutions they can be highly skilled but uh, if it is for uh, capricorn for capricorn it is actually the lord of uh, the 12th house sagittarius sitting in uh, uh, virgo these people are highly skilled they are very highly skilled and uh, uh, they know how to uh, handle big accounts like they can be very good chartered accountants and financial advisors they can go into the stock market but only if it is not malefically disposed if there is a good combination between saturn and jupiter so then this these people do very good in management and higher studies in hr they become hr managers or institutional heads or ceos so 12th lord in the 9th house is not bad for jupiter uh, but it's it's moderately good for capricorn but it is extremely good for aries so they will study abroad also aries people because uh they they there are and this is the ninth ninth house ninth lord and the 12th lord jupiter being in the ninth house it's aspecting the fifth house i am a little fast today i don't know why so it will give a lot of profitable journeys for even for abroad studies so <clears throat> this particular placement of jupiter in the ninth house is one of the best positions for peacefulness and contentness contentment so they are not greedy fellows so jupiter particularly in the ninth house makes a person calm and he is peaceful and he is like uh, you know he has a particular fixed routine in the day he is never lethargic but he never looks very active also he is he is calm he takes his time and does his work he never panics so that's a beautiful position and also why ninth house is regarded great for jupiter is because it is the fourth from the sixth house i am talking about the dusthanas now that is the trikshthanas the sixth eighth and the twelfth so from the sixth it is the fourth from the eighth it is the second and from the twelfth it is the tenth house so it is the karma sthana for your vyayasthana that is you will be very you know actively prepared not to unnecessarily waste resources so a nice chart for you know not wasting you know, they these people are not misers but obviously they don't waste things so it is the 10th from the 12th is a good position and uh, it is the second from the 8th they will make a lot of money and it comes because of the parental blessing you know some houses are there they would have given it for rent some buildings are there they would have given the shops for rent big institutions are there they would be running it from generations so this is a nice chart uh for uh, you know good happy blessed chart so i hope i have covered a considerable subject for jupiter in the 9th house thank you very much